updates and historic Rosedale water and sanitary sewer improvements. Um, during today's agenda, we'll be covering introductions of those involved with the project, doing an overview of the project locations and the streets affected by the project, answering some frequently asked questions and going through a timeline of the project. So your project team includes myself, Brenda Oropesa. I am the project manager. My phone number is 817-392-8271. Again, that number is 817-392-8271. And my email address is brenda.oropesa at fourthwordtexas.gov. That's B-R-E-N-D-A period O-R-O-P-E-Z-A at fourth word Texas spelled out dot gov. And our engineering design consultant that we have on board is Binkley and Barfield. And um, Tony Romo is a project manager representing them. So why are we doing this project? Fourth Ward prioritized, prioritizes water and sanitary sewer line replacements based on available data. This includes the water main break history, leak history, closed circuit TV inspection, the age of the line, the material of the line, if there are any left services on that line, or if the line is made of cast iron. These water lines were selected for replacement due to our cast iron initiative. Um, we currently have a goal of 20 miles um, of replacement for a cast iron in fiscal year 2023. There are also sanitary sewer lines in the vicinity that were identified as high risk or likelihood of failure. Um, and we are replacing those to avoid potential failures of the line. This project is in Council District 7. Um, construction may impact customers in Stop 6 Sunrise, Historic Rosedale Park, and Historic Stop 6 Neighborhood Association areas. Um, here's a map of kind of one of the sections that's being affected. Um, we have existing water and sanitary sewer mains, which will be replaced in nine streets and four easements. Landmarks include Dunbar High School, Jackwit Middle School, Sunrise McMillan Elementary School, Maud Logan Elementary, and Pate Elementary. The Martin Luther King Community Center and Eastbury Library are also in the vicinity of the project. So here's a project area showing the, the streets being affected, which are shown in black. Um, we have South Cup Road from Elgin Street to Ramey Avenue. We're going to be replacing the water on this street. The easement between Bong Drive and Capers Avenue from Farrell Lane to South Cup Road. We're going to be replacing the sewer. Booker T Street from South Cup Road to Andrew Avenue. We're going to be replacing the water and sewer. Reichenberger Place from South Cup Road to Car Carverly Drive. We're going to be replacing the water. The easement between Ramey Avenue and Lester Granger Street from Farrell Lane to 605 feet east. We're going to be replacing the sewer. Burdell Court from Carroll Avenue to Ramey Avenue. We're going to be replacing the water and sewer. Mount Horam Way from Turner Street to Cox Street. We're going to be replacing the water and sewer. Hatcher Street from East Berry Street to Wyman Drive. We're going to be replacing the water and sewer. Reed Street from Village Creek Road to East Berry Street, we're going to be replacing the water and sewer. Um, now for some general questions. Um, water will be turned off for approximately 15 to 30 minutes when the services are transferred from the existing water line to the temporary water line. And when those services are transferred again from the temporary water line to the new water line and these switchovers are done during the day. The contractor will knock on your door and let you know when it will be turned off. And those transfers typically take about 30 minutes per home. So the temporary water line ensures that you are not without water during construction. In the summer months, a continuous flow keeps the water from becoming stagnant in the above ground line. During the winter months, water must be continuously flowing through the temporary line to keep the line from freezing. Customers should also keep their faucets stripping. The bill for your water usage while you're on the temporary water line will be based on the average of the previous month's usage. 
will you need access to our property? So most of the construction on this project is taking place in the streets. There are a few sewer lines that are in easement. So if um, for some reason during construction, we do need to access your property, we will be contacting you. Will our sewer service be interrupted? So the sanitary sewer service will not be interrupted. New sewer cleanouts will be installed at the property line or the easement line. These sewer cleanouts provide easy access to the field operations crews in case there's a backup or blockage. And the sanitary sewer line from the cleanout to the home is considered private um, plumbing and the homeowner's responsibility to maintain, but having that cleanout allows us to be able to let you know if the problem is on the private side or the public side. Will I have access to my driveway? We will have an inspector assigned to the project once we begin construction. The inspector and the contractor will work with the residents who need driveway access during active construction hours. Will the city's trash truck be able to pick up my trash and recycling during construction? If your side of the street is closed on your scheduled trash collection day, the contractor will take your trash and recycling carts to the opposite side of the street so the trash collection vehicle can pick them up. Will there be lane closures during construction? Um, yes, we will have a tractor control plan once we have constructions and signs will be posted to alert motorists, but we will have more information during our public construction meeting as well. What are the construction hours? The hours of construction are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, and up, up upon requesting to work, the contractor can also work from 9 a.m. to 4 or 5 p.m. on Saturdays. Timeline, so this project is still in the design phase. We expect to finalize the sign, advertise for bids, and select a contractor by the spring of 2023. We will host a community construction meeting after we have a contractor on, on board. Where can I get more information? You can go to www.fourthwardtexas.gov and type in the project number which is 103-359. Again, that number is 103-359 in the search bar on the homepage. Westcliff and Westcliff West Area Water and Sewer Improvements will be the headline you're looking for. And once you click on that, it'll take you to the project page. To get project updates on this page, you can scroll down to the bottom of the project page and click on subscribe to this page. The link to the project summary and frequently asked questions will also be linked to the project page. How do I report an emergency or non-emergency? You can call our water call center for non-emergencies from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday. That number is 817-392-4477. And that that non-emergency number is closed city holidays, but our emergencies line it's open 24 hours a day, and it's that same number, 817-392-4477, and you just select option one, and that's to report major water main break sewer backups. Um, you can also download the My Fort Worth app. It's my FW app from the App Store or Google Play. On the app, you can report sewer overflows, leaks, water main breaks, missing or broken meter lids, water theft, water violations, lack of water service, water pressure issues, or any other sewer concerns you may have. Um, above, you can see my information again. Uh, my name is Brenda Oropesa. I am the project manager on this project. I can be reached at 817-392-8271. And the email address on that is brenda.oropesa at fourthwordtexas.gov. Um, our engineering con design consultant, as mentioned, was B Binkley and Barfield. Um, so if you have any design, con any concerns about your property, you can reach out to me and I can let you kind of see what we're proposing on your property in terms of rehabilitation. All right, thank you. I'll hand it over to Sally for some questions. If there's any questions on the chat. Uh, I no have questions. some questions. This is Mayor Pro Tem Gina Bivens. Yes. 
Okay, here are my quest questions. I had told Mary G that if we didn't have at least 10 people on this call, that I would request you guys do the meeting again, and I'm willing to help. Are you all doing in person meetings yet? Yeah, we, we can do both. We can do WebEx or in person meetings. Okay, well, I think an in person meeting in the community near the streets that are impacted will be very beneficial. Uh, one, I have 3 questions. The 1st 1 is. I heard you say that you'll have supervisors knock on the doors 15 minutes or so before the work starts or the duration of the work, maybe 15 minutes. What what other form of advanced notification are you going to be giving to people? Yes, we also have door hangers that we place 7 days before construction and also, I believe the day before construction begins to let them know we're going to be in the area. And typically, um, when we're working on the street, it takes about 2 weeks on average. So they'll once they're laying the pipe. They should be there about 2 weeks. So once the new lines installed, it they'll kind of know it's one. It's basically when the lines finish installing and we've tested the water to make sure it passes um, quality assurance. They'll be reconnected to that line. So, um. I don't know if the inspector specific, we can get once we have an inspector on board, we can get with them to see what more information they can provide the residents on that. I think 7 days advance is good for a door hanger. How many homes will be impacted by this? Um, do you know how many um, mailers you send out, Sally? I'm not sure else. Let me see. Let me bring send out more than 500 mailers, but that also includes people who are going to be impacted by traffic and not necessarily living on those streets. Well, so. Okay, you can you can send that to me. I've got some more questions. Uh, when when you take a look at the problems that people see after work is done, I think staff needs to be prepared to make sure the mailer has in there what happens after your first visit. You know, once the work gets started and you guys are leaving it to cure whatever what have you, that's when people are lost because they don't know that you're coming back within a, a certain number of days. And so I would hope that your mailer can have that and it'll keep a lot of people calm. Yeah, and on those door hangers we put out, we um, actually also put the inspector's contact card on those door hangers. And I believe we also have my contact information on there. Yeah, that's, that's not what I'm asking. What if what I'm asking is, uh, I, I guess you would say proactive information, number one, if you have proactive information, then people don't have to call your supervisors. And so when the work starts, people need to know how long it'll be before your workers come back. And, and I've seen cases where it's been more than a week and a whole block was wondering when are they coming back? So you can be proactive in communication. And I, I, and I do want to see the mailers before they go out the next time. And should I contact you, Sally? Is that, is that a Mary G question? Sally. I do the mailers and we generally um, send those five weeks before the meeting um, because the goal is to have them in mailboxes two weeks prior to the community. Okay, that, that's not my question. My, my question is I'd like to see the mailers before they go out the next time. And my question was, do I get with you on that or Mary G? You would get with me because I'm the one that does the mailers. Okay, then I'll, I'll get with you on that. And thank you for putting this meeting online so that at least people who have interest will will see it. But out of 500 mailers and no one showing up, I do see one potential citizen named Martina on a mobile phone. But yeah, you know, we 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 really want to make sure we do the best we can to get get the word out. And the city has this new chief communications officer. Maybe we can get his office involved as well. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Bivens. My pleasure. Are there any questions in the chat, Sally? Um, so this is Laura Wilson. I have a question for Mayor Pro Tem Bivens. Um, 
We would love to do in-person meetings. We love those. Um, do you have a date in mind at this point? Because I know that's always been a, a tough issue, just trying to mesh everybody's schedules together. And so um, I was wondering if you were maybe thinking about a date yet or how best we should coordinate that. That, that depends on your dates, you know, when you plan on having the contractor on board, when you plan on starting the work. Uh, when we had the uh, recent budget meetings, uh, my my district was number one in attendance until Carlos Flores pulled a north side meeting. So we've got staff who can help get the word out and all you have to do is let me work with you. But a lot of that depends on your calendar. And so if you send me your calendar, the projected date of hiring the contractor, the projected date of starting the work, you know, that helps us determine when we need to get the word out because when you have a meeting and a project is three, four months down the road, even if people do show up, they're not going to remember. And so, you know, I'd be more than happy to work with you guys on that. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, um, just a reminder, we do a link, we do a YouTube video link to this um, WebEx meeting. We also put a PDF of the PowerPoint on the project page, and we have summary FAQs in both English and Spanish. It might be Monday before all of that is, um, is uh, linked to the page, but make sure you check back to um, 103359, Brenda. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, 103359 in the search bar on the home page. It's a very Thank good you, presentation. Everybody. You guys did a real good job. It's a very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you.